Good morning, everybody. Good morning to a beautiful day here in the Philippines, here beachside on Panay Island, Iloilo Province, just outside of Iloilo City and our wonderful municipality, Tigbawan. And today's going to be, set this coffee down. Today's going to be uh, a busy day here because that staircase right there over my shoulder, we're going to pour it today. Um, it would be really nice to get those steps there. We've got a lot of construction to do above. We don't have to be climbing ladders then. A lot safer. We can walk up and down a set of stairs. Uh, a lot of times on these job sites, what they'll do is take a whole bunch of bamboo and angle it out, tie pieces across, and use that like a long ramp to run up and down as a temporary construction staircase. But instead of wasting time materials on that, I just wanted to build the permanent staircase and get it on in place. Um, today will be the last day of our work week because it's Fiesta in our barangay right now. A little um, story on that is that you have, say like in a whole municipality, a whole city is broke up in the barangays and different barangays have their festivals at different times. Now there might be a barangay having a festival somewhere else on the other part of the municipality at the same time we are, but they're not all like same time. like ours and then the next barangay and the next barangay they'll be broke up sometimes different times of the year sometimes just by a week or two and everybody likes to hop over to their friends that live over here to their barangay's fiesta and then hop over here to their friends fiesta and all and um and it's just that fiesta festival festive everybody enjoys these things here in the philippines so it's ours we're going to uh, have a full house. All the guest rooms are going to be occupied for Fiesta. Um, we've got um, Mock Mock and all of them. They're going to be having friends and guests over at their houses and stuff too. Uh, plus, we're going to have a pretty good group here as well. And um, we may even have, um, not 100% sure yet, but we may have another uh, vlogger from down in the Dumaguete and Cebu area that's going to be here and uh, it's going to be a good time man we'll have different expats and stuff to come we're going to have lots of family lots of family so great time but back to the build so Mark did a really good thing here he always is on top of it he's put supports down that middle where we kind of skimped out on two by two, um, trying to save. We bought so much two by two for this project. And so he found a way around it and cutting little bamboo strips just to hold that in the middle so those don't bow and get a curve in them. Um, we did the same thing. We kind of cheaped out and instead of using two by two on the side down here, there's some two by two behind that plywood or OSB, but on the outside we'd normally put another one, but they also just put uh, some bamboo strips there and try to save back on some of the lumber. You can see a little bit of the form work underneath here. These two by threes are notched in. They're tied with tie wire so there's no slippage. You got two by threes running down through here supporting this and two by twos going across. And so we didn't bury these bamboo posts into the ground. Their uh, shape and all on the bottom of them, they would just cut through the soil. So we put things like wood blocks and concrete blocks and stuff underneath them so that they can't sink and we don't end up getting some deflection and uh, a problem of, on our concrete while it's curing. Here's that little uh, landing that kind of pie shapes out right up here at the top so this will be step one right here and it'll be the first part of the concrete pour well I should be the second part because we poured the footing in this little sidewalk underneath and you can see now what I meant about pouring this on out where that gets down small there to where it's not hard to maintain uh, of course we could set things like you know, little pots with plants and stuff on that concrete. And then the rest of this right here will be a little flower bed. And going straight right here will be another sidewalk. 
and this right here where all this uh, rubble's being piled up right here temporary uh, there will be a concrete deck around the pool coming around so once it's all said and done in landscape it's gonna be very beautiful so you'd be walking by here on the sidewalk it's gonna be a little jacuzzi tub a little jacuzzi tub and all underneath down in here once this bamboo is removed will be um, usable space around the pool um, there will be some pumps and stuff a little pump room over to one side and I think I'm gonna put a men's urinal in um, maybe I might put two of them you know so that uh, I can try to avoid the boys um, <laughs> peeing everywhere including the guests I, i'm gonna post some signs you know requesting that even the guys that come here as guests and visit don't find a tree and just uh do their do so it'll really change all this old uh, gray concrete will not be like that anymore soon it'll all make a huge change all right, well, let's get on with this day and let's see how this pour and build goes. I want to thank you all for joining today. Ooh, that coffee's hot. Mm. Um, I hope you enjoyed these build videos and uh, it's a, more of a lifestyle vlog channel, but we do a lot of building. That's my hobby. That's what I enjoy. That's my passion. It's what I love is building things, rebuilding things, refurbishing things. Um, that is just what I have always enjoyed. And uh, I just hope that you're enjoying it too. If you are, hit a thumbs up on this video, uh, comment. And I'll tell you something else I want to give a shout out on. You know, is uh, there was another fellow vlogger building here in the Philippines that I've never met him or nothing like that. We're not friends or anything, but he too was a passionate builder, like myself. It was married with a Filipina. And, I guess their relationship has went awry now, and um, I don't know what the future is of the Chandler channels they have, but it was Armstrong family, Richard and Donna with Armstrong family, and I'm sad to see what's happening with them. Um, it's not good. It's a reality of life, but it's not good, and I just want everyone to be respectful of their private life and don't get uh, mean and hateful and joining in on the blame wagon and all you you never know what's happened in a relationship sometimes just two people neither ones did anything truly wrong they just don't they just don't match and uh it may not be anything of what they've done with each other but because they were in public eye they get a lot of scrutiny and there's a lot of gossip and what they call here in the philippines chismas so um Y'all just please be respectful of uh, Richard and Donna uh, as they move forward with their lives and the kids too. Just be respectful of them. I'm really asking and um, in the Armstrong family and um, we'll just wish them the best and I hope that Richard can work through this and that maybe he too can be back building again and uh, he's definitely uh, of the same spirit of loving the build just like I am. So. It's like a fellow brother right there. Don't know him personally, so all I know is the vlog the same as you know our vlog. So I want to talk about the hand mixing of the concrete and we're going to talk about that many times during this vlog um, I, I, that's just something I constantly hear my old subscribers know my feelings on it and my reasons why but there's lots of new people come along since this house was built so I'm going to explain this a little bit at different points as to why I do it like I do and they're getting their first concrete here in Pels right now so Let's say if we had a truck, let's talk about ready mix first, the transit truck. Say I had a transit truck to come here. It's going to come here with a whole load, and it's going to want to get that load off its truck fast. 
So now uh, we don't know if they're honest or not. We don't truly know what the PSI mix is. They could say that they mixed it at 4,500 pounds per square inch and you might be getting 2,500 pounds per square inch. You don't know. With this, we, we can control and we know what what we're doing here. We know our mix. So there's one thing. The next thing is, is that they're gonna wanna get that out of there fast. We're gonna be at their mercy of how they mix the slump on it. And that's another problem. When you have a big load of concrete and you've gotta dump it fast, you've gotta get it out fast, we can't just have a simple forming like this right here. It won't work because you're going to load a mass amount of hydraulic pressure against the forms. We would have to have a ton of cribbing on the sides. We'd have to have braces coming in on the sides right here. Lots more material, lots more labor. So in your eyes, you think that we're spending more labor by hand mixing this concrete. But in the reality of having a transit truck to come and it's cost us more because now we got to buy more lumber and we've got to do a lot more building to support that. And we can still risk a blowout somewhere. So just picture this kind of like a just-in-time mix. They're going to pour this step, and you see we've got our slump really good, so it's nice and thick. And we're going to keep on a constant, gradual move. Them taking time, having to mix up another batch and all over there on the ground and deal with it. Uh, we're staying in a constant but slow progression going up. And with that, we never get this huge hydraulic load on the forms, but we don't get a cold joint either. We're always moving forward. So the bottom creek can start firming up a little bit. And uh, actually, hey, the next one mix it just a little bit more water than that because that's still a little thick mix, right there. Mix. Yeah. And so, uh, thank you, bro. Okay. Here, here. <laughs> so, that's one of the big reasons right there. Next, um, we could have a machine here. Well, those machines, um, a lot of your DIY, do-it-yourself machines, they're small. They don't mix a very big load. Um, we mix more in one batch on the ground than that machine does. And so what are you going to do? You're still going to shovel up the stone. You're still going to shovel up the sand. You're still going to pick up the bags of cement and dump them and all in the machine or on the ground, either one. You're still going to measure and add water in the machine or on the ground, either one. And then the difference is the machine sitting there either using electricity or it's sitting there using diesel and it's noisy and you got to clean that machine up and maintain it you can't just let it go you got time into keeping it going uh, things break on it concrete can get hard inside of it and the machine is actually slower and then what are your guys doing at that point in time they're standing around waiting for a machine to spin to where the guys are still standing there but now they got a shovel in their hands and they're they're the one mixing it even if when we're doing a big pour if i have to take on extra labor that's money that i can put into the community instead of into a machine and uh we're very good at mixing this this entire property uh reflects that the entire property does so when we do it like a big pour like on a slab we will set up a long run we will mix up in one single mix if you want to compare it to a, a larger machine that you can rent, we, we can mix as much as maybe three or four batches in a, in a larger rental machine that you can get. We, we will outpace any machine. It's just the way it is. It's just the truth. Um, and we don't want too much too fast. Again, it means you got to do a whole lot more building. you got a whole lot more chance for a blowout with all the hydraulic pressure so we like to do this kind of just in time mix um you need a hammer here to tap those forms you got a rubber hammer handy where is all those rubber hammers i bought 
I saw one. I've been using it, but there should be many. So that's another thing uh, people bring up about a vibrator. Um, I don't want to overwork the concrete. And with a vibrator, um, you need a person skilled at that. If, uh, if it's too wet, now this here is not too wet. But if it's too wet, you're going to set all the aggregate to the bottom. All the concrete will rise to the top. And you're going to have uh, more damage with using a vibrator than not using one. So we just hand work it. A lot of times with steel rod. Right now, Joel's using a bamboo pole. but um, And these rubber hammers. A rubber hammer is a lot better than, than using like a steel hammer. It don't break your forms up and pop stuff loose. It's just right on working out. Talking about renting a machine here for mixing. If you rent a machine, a lot of times the people that rent them they, they don't just turn their machine loose with you. Usually they're diesel operated with a little small one cylinder diesel that's pretty common little motor used on fishing boats and all here. And they are going to rent it with an operator and you're gonna pay the cost of renting the machine and that operator. And uh, you're, you're gonna be at the operator's mercy how he wants to do things. He's calling your shots then. And then uh, you've got to buy diesel. You've got to pay. Sometimes they'll try to hit you with a cleaning charge and stuff, you know. Um, you got to listen to that thing run. Listen to peace and quiet we have here other than a diesel pump boat going by far off in the distance. Imagine if that's a motor right here in your ears all day long. So um, there's that issue too. You don't just go rent the machine. You, you rent it with an operator and in the hours they want to work and they're calling the shots so you buy a machine well to get a quality one that's one thing and then a lot of these machines are built by like they're almost homemade there's some companies that build them but when you look at them they're pretty suspect in how they're built and they're pretty prone to breaking down um that's a whole issue within itself I've, I've went through it in the past and I just said no I'm not going through this again and we've been very successful here with our build so I didn't catch on video just then he's taking that rubber hammer and he's tapping the bottom of that form on the belly side of it too working any of that aggregate and, and uh, bubbles out of it little air pockets Careful, you know Joel's fragile. <laughs> you know he's getting old, his bones are thin. Careful. Miller, you mean that's it? You get that t shirt, the Texas Filipino business shirt. What is your size? Six dollars. You have money? No? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> I tricked him into going and asking for a shirt. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I want to get some shirts, but you know, uh, when Marlon was here helping us before Chip, I gave him one of those Texas Filipino shirts. And that same day, he's wearing it on top of his head, <laughs> carrying concrete sacks. <laughs> And a shirt that I just spent a lot of money for now has yeah. cement all over it in one day. Yeah. And I'm like, man, dude, that shirt. And we had those made in the U.S., you know. And and he just used it like a rag. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, 
Ah, heck yeah, boy. Yeah. Nice. Fresh. I want it. We got Papa Yaw and the pipe to the line. Oh, that's five pesos, man. <laughs> oh, just take them up there to Melinda where she can put them in something. So, Christian came over next door. He caught all these crabs, man. I like these, man. These are delicious right here. So, he got those and one small lobster. If I would have caught this lobster, I probably would have put it back. But, yeah. But it's already been out now. It's already stressed now. It won't make it. So uh, there's no choice. So just enjoy it. Yep. Even me, though, I want to return that one. It's still small. Yeah. But it's the way it is. They caught it, and they've already had it out for a while. And uh, it'll never make it. So there's no choice now. But um, it's the way it is. Yeah, better to steam immediately so that it's not gonna lose the weight of the yeah. shrimp. Or yeah, just use a little bit of that right there. Let's see what you which one, which one you got. Louisiana crawfish, shrimp, and crab ball. Oh man, it just smells good second you open that package. Mm -hmm. Love that smell. So we should say now, ooh wee! That's gonna be some mighty good finger licking right there, girl. Hey, there's more though. You want me to add more? Nah, it's all good right there. Down here on the bajou. But throw throw a little bit of garlic in there, some garlic cloves in there. That'd be really good. Yeah, look at that, man. That is good stuff. Man. That smells good. It's not a lot of stuff. Mmm. <laughs> that look delicious. It's making me hungry watching you eat. So we've been over also making sure we have all the rebar set for when we put the stainless steel railing like this. And it's going to be this exact same railing so we're getting it all set up uh, for some dowels sticking up out of there that they will weld that stainless to. It's about 11 in the morning and they had of course break and I, they usually have about a 15 minute break. I let them take about a 30 minute break. and. Uh, so that's what we got from the time we got here at 8 this morning. They finished up a few little things on forms, doing this mix, having their break, and it's 11 something right now, and we're almost done with it. And got these dials going in here. And I'm coming up here right now to see the placement for the last set. Now, these steps have got to tie in to where we're going to be pouring up here. There's a double matting there, and that landing's being poured really thick and over into the beam. So we're going to pour just a little bit in the bottom, but not all. We're going to pour down in that first level of steel. And uh, if you see, it's got a double matting. But there she is going up.
So we can walk on it. It's safe to walk on it. Uh, we'll let this cure for a while before we pull the form so the front edges don't get broke off or anything. But it's a walkable staircase. It's very comfortable to walk on. Uh, today we put up these flags right here across. Just kind of making it a little festive here. Yep. And the guys are out here cleaning the beach, getting trash that comes up and all. Wow, look at Mel here. She has got stuff lined up preparing for a fiesta. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? All those colors, man. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Yeah, look at this. Just look at this, man. Look at these big old carrots, too, boy. Carrots, potato, ginger, garlic, onions, calamansi. Got chilies here. What do you got here? What are these? Some little oranges? Lemons. Lemons. Oh, they, sh they sure are regular little lemons. What else you got right here? What's this? That's big onions in it. The big white onions. Wow, nice. She's just been over here working, working, working on stuff with like this pineapple juice, getting all these desserts ready. She's already done a lot. You see those big cans of fruit that's been opened up down there, mixed fruit and all. 